Hi, in this episode of Gray Lightning, we're going to talk about how to design and laser cut a dice tower. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And in this episode, I want to talk about dice towers. Now, in a prior episode, I showed how to make these shelves for displaying miniatures. And you probably won't be surprised to learn there's a lot of commonalities in these projects. Because in the end, a dice tower is really just a set of specialty shelves. So I'll show how to do the design in Adobe Illustrator. I'll manufacture it in several different acrylics on a laser cutter. I will uh, show how to fuse it together because this is fused. I designed it for my permanent game table. But I'll also talk about a version you can make that you can assemble and disassemble and take to game night. So I'll talk about all these things in this episode. Let's start with the basic structure of a dice tower. This dice tower is about five inches tall and five inches wide at the base. It has a front and a back, which keep the dice from rolling out and give it structure. It has two small half shelves on 45 degree angles and one large shelf that directs the dice into the tray at the bottom. There's a stop at the end that keeps the dice from rolling out and it's open on the bottom so that you can lift the dice tower and see the dice. I imported a couple of things from prior drawings, of course my Grey Lightning logo, and this side from my shelf, because this slot here, which is, when I look at the transform, it's a .1112 inches high. That's the thickness of my acrylic, and I've really worked a long time to get that number right, so I'm going to use it in this drawing. The shelves and the front and the back were made using the rectangle tool. I always use live corners to curve the corners so that they're not sharp and they're less likely to break. And then I use the rectangle tool to make the tab. Now I make it 0.125, which is a little bit bigger than the 0.112 that I think is actually the thickness of the side. And I do that because then it'll stick out past the edge a little bit and I'll have a ledge to use for fusing. I select the three pieces, I align them. Then I distribute the space and take all the space out. I use Pathfinder to unify them into a single piece. Then I make a side view for each piece, and I have a red cut version, which is the size of the tab. But then I also make a piece that represents the full height, and I make that green because I can put that on a drawing and my laser cutter ignores green so it won't do anything with it. So now when I cut and paste that into my side drawing, I can rotate it to 45 degrees, I can move it into place, I can make sure that everything fits, and I get perfect placement. The main thing I'm looking for on placement is that I want the front and the back to be aligned with the top of the dice tower. And on the shelves, I want to make sure that they have enough space between them that the dice can actually fit through. As I said, the front and the back are made the same as the shelves, and all I have to do here is add the logo to the front. Once all of the parts are ready, I put them on a single layer that I call cutting so that I can cut the whole project at one time. I've shown the laser cutting process in a lot of prior videos. Basically, you just have to tell it what kind of material you have and its thickness, and it does the rest. After testing on some scrap acrylic and seeing the design works, I cut it in fluorescent orange, which is one of my favorite acrylics. And I'm trying a new acrylic here called Plasta Blur. This is the daffodil color, and it's frosted on one side and shiny on the other. You can see that it's not really transparent, it's translucent. Um, that's the shiny side, that's the frosted side. The logo doesn't show up as well. Um, but it's an interesting product. So now the assembly. You start by putting everything into one side, and this is the hard part, just getting the second side on, because as you can imagine, those shelves inside want to wobble around a little bit, and it's kind of tricky to get the second side on. But once you do, you just uh, put these rubber bands on it to hold it together, and you fuse it. This whole process takes about five or six minutes. I'm going to try to show a close-up here of fusing because as you put the liquid in, it wicks into the seam. And if you watch closely, you can see that it turns dark as that fluid wicks into that opening. 
and that's how you know that you've got a good fuse. This is where having that little edge stick out is very, very helpful. Here's a quick word about cast acrylic, which is what I always use, and it's considered to be very high quality for laser cutting applications. It's one downside is it's more variable on its thickness. So I found that when I got to the orange fluorescent acrylic, it was hard to put some of the tabs in, and it didn't fuse as well because the gaps weren't as consistent, and in fact I had some drips, as you can see here. If you have a drip when fusing, just don't touch it and everything should be fine. If you want to convert this design to one that you can take apart, this hook system that we showed in the mini shelves would work for the dice tower as well. You can see this, uh, the drawing of the shelves, the side hooks were up, and you would have to put these hooks on the top and the bottom of the front and the back, and one on the footer. If you put upward hooks on the sides, you would need to put downward hooks on the front and the back and the footer. Another option instead of two hooks is to put hooks on these and just slots on the side. As for the tabs on the shelves, you don't need to do anything other than make them a little bit longer so they don't come out if there's any kind of movement in the dice tower. As for my results, I did like the Plasta Blur, but I learned because it has two different sides that rotating uh, the second side was not enough. I needed to flip it as well, and I didn't. So one side is shiny and one side is frost, so that needs to be fixed in the drawing. But it seems like always my favorite is the transparent fluorescent acrylic. I prefer this for my tokens and for my rollers, and now I prefer it for my dice tower. This has been a fun project, and I have a lot of other fun projects coming up, so please subscribe to my channel.